All right, here are some tips for how I uh, make uh, assessments on Google Forms. So one of the things I do when I make the form is I go through two things here, the, the settings. Um, I like to collect the students' email addresses, so even if they don't type in their name, I can see who took it. Um, they usually they have to be signed in so that they're I know they're part of the school. Only let them take it once. I make sure that they cannot edit it after submitting if it's a test, so they can't just go back and change their answers. Um, okay, and I usually don't let them see like the, the summary charts, it just depends. So those are some of the first settings I always look at. Um, presentation, if I want the questions to be in random order, I do that sometimes, that's good, like if the students are next to each other or something and I don't want them to like see each other's screen, so that if they're doing everything out of order, that's fine. Progress bar just lets them know how far along the test they are. Um, for this test, I didn't shuffle the question in order because I threw in like some instructions here and there, or I wanted, I had three different questions that would go together as a group, so I didn't want them to be out of order. And then obviously, you wanted to go to here, quizzes, to make sure uh, it is registered as a quiz. Um, I could have done the grades submitted right after the students finish it. Um, but I chose later after manual review so that, you know, I, the, if some students finished early, I didn't want them to then just be able to message other students and sit, give them screenshots or whatever. Oh, look, this was the answer. This was the answer. I don't really think that, you know, cheating is a part of our school. Like the culture is really good and that kids don't look to do that. Um, but I had it like that so that they would have to wait until everyone was done with the test and then I could click and send the emails that would show them which questions they got wrong and what the correct answers were. Um, so yeah, they can see missed questions, correct answers, and the point value of everything. So those are some settings to get started. And then the annoying thing is like you have to be careful um, when you make a question. Um, so say, okay, so for this question here, um, for each question you have to make sure you do the answer key you give it a point value. I give everything on this test a point value of one, and you have to make sure that you um, that you choose the option that is the correct answer. You can also add answer feedback. So, like if you want to give the explanation to the answer, that's another great thing for kids to use as feedback. Um, you know, it just takes extra time, so that's why I didn't do it this time. Um, but ideally, that would be a great thing to add. Uh, I like to sometimes shuffle the option order because maybe when I make the test I just put like the correct answer is the first option each time um, and then you know then I don't have to make as many changes as I go along and then I can just shuffle the option order and then the computer will automatically put them in a different order um, and that, that way I don't have to think hmm did I make too many answers questions with the answer of the first option second option third option um, and that's pretty much it. Also, I usually make sure that it's required so the kids don't accidentally get a question wrong just because they skip it. Um, I like to, as I make the test, just if I'm making a new question, just uh, duplicate a question. Uh, and that way it saves all these things here. And I guess one thing that that makes it helpful for is um, if I'm randomizing the order of the answers and I want them all to be a question that's worth one point and... The, you know, I can just put the correct answer as the first one and the other options as the subsequent, subsequent ones. And then I don't have to, for, if I don't do that and I just click create new question, then I have to make sure that I give each question a point value mark, which is the correct answer. But if I just duplicate it and then just change the, the text and maybe add a different image and change the options, sometimes it makes it faster and then I don't have to click on the point value, the correct answer, the making a multiple choice, uh, making sure it's shuffled, making sure it's required. It just makes that faster. But now I have two number twos, so I'm going to delete that. Um, yeah, that's it. Those are some ways I do uh, Google Forms for assessments. And then it just makes it quicker to have the whole thing graded at once. You know, it's 26 total points here. And then when students get their score, they can say, okay, I got 21 out of 26. And then if you need to help explain what that means to them from there, you can.